My name is Maria Hamlin-Suniga. I come from Nicaragua and I'm working on a project that is related to ecological justice and social justice. Nicaragua um, is a country that had a revolutionary process that ended with the overthrow of the dictator in 1979. A revolutionary government was installed, a very progressive government that existed for 10 years and was defeated in democratic elections. In 1990, a new government took power and for the next 16 years there were neoliberal policies, very severe neoliberal policies that were um, imposed upon Nicaragua. Some of the conditionalities of the World Bank and IMF were actually worse than the poorest countries of Africa. In uh, 2007, the Sandinistas took power again, but a very different um, relationship of the Sandinistas to the people because many things had changed since they had last been in power. Uh, today, there is still a great deal of poverty in Nicaragua. There are many social problems related to poverty. My organization is CSAS, the Center for Information and, and Advisory Services in Health. Our organization is 29 years old and we've worked over the years with government, with uh, organizations of people in their communities, and we've always worked with children. In Nicaragua, 67% of the population are under 25 years of age. So we have a huge population of children and youth many of them without um, sufficient opportunities for education. So we have been working with, with children and youth from the beginning, but it even is much more urgent that we do so now because of the ways that children are drawn into criminal activities, into the use of drugs. Children are often suffering from abuse in their homes and on the streets. So we work in neighborhoods of Managua that are extremely poor and, and without some of the facilities that people should have for a decent living. And there are children who are high risk children in that sense. We also work with children and youth in rural communities, again, poverty stricken rural communities. And because Nicaragua is a country very prone to having disasters, and I don't talk about natural disasters because phenomena are natural, hurricanes, earthquakes are natural phenomena, but we have, we have the situation of vulnerability of our population. So all these, all our people live daily with, with the threat of some sort of disaster, one of the highest in the world. Central America is one of the most vulnerable regions of the world. So. The project that we have deals with preparing children so that they learn to know and understand the relationship of themselves as human beings to nature and how they have to work to prevent the destruction of nature. We work on the principles of the child-to-child -child methodology or peer education using Paulo Freire's methodology of liberating education. We've always done that. And we also work with the children on helping them be aware of ways that they can examine what's happening around them. For example, we work with what we call allegremia, the th five A's or six A's or seven. It doesn't come out in English, but in Spanish it's agua, which is water, aire, which is air, abrigo, which is housing and clothing, afecto or amor, which is love and, and caring, and, and also um, alimentación, which is nutrition. So we work around these 
different themes and children identify what are the problems related to these themes. Well, certainly people who live in areas where there's no water available to them within their house or maybe just down the street or a few blocks away and they have to carry water or rural areas where that happens, those people understand the value of water. We work on situations related to air, the contamination of the air, the burning of the garbage, and, and they do maps of their neighborhood, and if they live in a, an industrial area, there might be industrial contamination and so on. And what we want to come out of this is an awareness of their relationship to nature and how we have to protect our environment in all senses and how we can do that and why it's just that we do that why we have to do that so that there will be future generations that can live on this planet so it's it's very exciting we love working with children most people think that kids don't have anything to say and we've learned over the years that kids really have to be the protagonists of the work that we do mm -hmm.